Hey, this is Manny Moonraker, and I am live today, Saturday, the 26th. I figure I give it a whirl live. I uh, haven't done the live show since uh, the days of Big O. Because, of course, as you know, if you listen to the show, uh, Mr. Big O was a fan of doing the show live, and I totally was not. Totally hate it. The bloopers cannot be fixed. And this is why I don't like doing this live, but I am here today live. I said, we got to get to it. It's a good way to get a a practice, should I say, for the YouTube, for the YouTubes, in order to get ready to uh, basically put it all out there, right? We're going to be on YouTube video coming soon. I've got half my equipment in, so we're getting ready. So, uh, in case you haven't noticed, we have a new logo for this year. And uh, that logo kind of reminds me of the Illuminati Triangle. So, I kind of went with it. And uh, we will be unveiling it with the new t-shirts shortly at the Aurora Alien Encounter. And I'm hoping, like I said before, hoping to get some interviews from people who are presenting at that conference. But we'll get to that shortly. I'm pretty sure that they are eager to speak to you about what they're presenting, the information they have for you, and what the event really is all about. In other news, if you haven't had a chance to view the movie The Alienators, it's out. Check it out. And as a bonus, in addition to the fact that we had Christopher Farley on here, he conducted he conducted an interview uh, with me, and uh, you want to go back. I think it's two episodes and listen to that. But if you've seen the movie, even if you haven't, two of the actors that were in the movie will be joining me next week, and so we're going to talk about them, kind of their history in uh, the movie making and acting and things like that, and we're also going to talk about. The movie itself. You know, what did it mean to them? We can find out from them whether or not they even follow the topic of UFOs, ufology, or anything else. So now for those of you who might be listening to this show later on in a playback, whenever we go live, you can actually listen to and interact with me and anyone else that's on the show on Spreaker. So we just go on to Spreaker, look for UFO Buster Radio, and when we're live, you can interact through what they call a little chat box. Or if you're brave, you can phone in using Skype. All the information for calling in is in the description, as well as the number to call in is 972-290-1329. And... uh, That basically is what I have so far for you as far as news. The t-shirts are out. The link is in the description. It's at a company called Spreadshirt. Grab one. As a matter of fact, if you're going to the Aurora Alien Encounter, grab one and join me. We'll be twins. So, I did have two items to go over that I wanted to discuss with you guys. Bring attention to you so that you can see, check out, read, and stay up to date at at some of the madness. Really, some of the madness that's going on when it comes to UFOs. In addition to that, we'll also do our, what's uh, becoming a regular, the uh, MUFON report for the week. But, before we do that, I had... One amazing, amazing news article that came out of the Gulf of Mexico. This report is nuts. And so we always hear about the triangular shaped UFOs, the TR-3B. As a matter of fact, there was a couple of articles about the TR-3B this week. One even alluded to the fact that MUFON was not able to explain 
this particular sighting. But on this one, we do have a dark colored craft, but it wasn't triangular. So this was reported on the internet as an incident that occurred March 21st, close to 7 p.m. off the coast of Louisiana. And this is how it reads. Just before dusk, the individual that reported this and four crew members aboard a vessel that was 240 feet in length. Keep that number in mind. It's really important. So the line of sight that this individual reports is a quarter mile from the vessel. So basically that's how far he could see. Now there was an oil rig. You know those oil rigs that are in the Gulf sit out there. Uh, that was about a half mile behind them. And they were exactly 80 miles southeast of New Orleans. New Orleans if you're from around there. So the issue, or should I say the sighting, it might be an issue for him because, you know, you're on a boat. Where the hell are you going to go when you see something like this? Uh, so the incident itself lasted 40 seconds. The craft rose out of the water. I'm going to pause. Dramatic pause. And I'm going to repeat that one more time. 240 foot vessel and a craft pulls up out of the water. So here's the kicker. The individual says that there was no water dripping from the vessel or should I say the UFO or is it a USO? Whatever it is, it's unidentified. It was oval shaped and dark colored, made no sound. The oval shaped vessel was four times the size of the ship they were on. I'm sorry, but if it was me, I'd. I'd freak out. So four times the size of a 240-foot vessel rises out of the water. The water doesn't even cling to it. Doesn't even drip from it. Has no sound. Rises up silently. And then takes off. Listen, you can't... You can't just write this stuff off. And you know that a a sighting like this, it's incredible. But you know, at dusk, I'm sure no one really thought about taking any pictures because, I mean, you're on a 240-foot boat, an unidentified aircraft, four times the size of what you're sitting on, and just come out of nowhere... And it's there for a few seconds. I'm sorry, but I've seen the movies. You run and hide. That is just crazy. So that's the report. It happened March 21st. So this isn't something that happened months ago, years ago. This month in the Gulf of Mexico, this is the report that came out. And it was saucer-shaped. Wasn't your usual TR-3B saucer-shaped UFO rising out of the Gulf of Mexico? So the link for this article is in the description so you can check it out. You can check it out now if you're listening live. Or you can check it out at your leisure. But again, it's a magnificent sighting. You don't really hear about things like this. Especially... When it comes to things rising out of the water like this. And I mean, it was pretty close. So you can't really mistake this for a submarine. Because submarines usually just don't come completely out of the water. And uh, 
sit there in the air for a little bit and take off. So I figured I'd bring this to your attention because the truth is out there. And UFO sightings are increasing time after time, again and again, more and more, week after week, month after month. So at TR3B, you could say, well, you know, this could be a secret, you know, military project. The new, the new black, uh, Blackbird. The new supersonic plane. But if you listen to Corey Good, this is more than just a supersonic plane. It's, it's space worthy. It's hitting all kinds of speeds. But this particular craft takes us back to the saucer days. I mean, really, it would have been absolutely fantastic if someone would have taken a picture of this thing. But like I said, you know, sitting there in the middle of the ocean, uh, surrounded by all, by all that water on that small craft, basically small compared to what they saw. The cell phone is the last thing in mind. Plus, you're really not going to get a signal on your cell phone, so it's probably locked up in a locker somewhere. But amazing, amazing report, amazing report. So, Robo, let them know where they can uh, connect with us. Don't forget to visit us at ufobusterradio.com, Instagram, Twitter, and on Facebook. So that's right, if you want to connect with us and uh, you want to listen to some of the old shows that we have in the archive, check us out at ufobusterradio.com. Uh, we do have a Manny Moonraker page on Facebook and um, Instagram. You know, I post once in a while on Instagram, Manny Moonraker. But big things are coming, right? The show must go on. And I was pondering the other day about a co-host. The show really is a little easier when you have a co-host and someone to uh, bounce off ideas and information. And honestly, when you're conducting interviews, it's great as well because that other individual might ask questions that uh, the Moonraker just does not come up with. So I'm thinking maybe this summer we're going to have a a search, a co-host search. So we'll make that into a contest, I think. More to come on that. So for right now, let's talk about the good old MUFON stuff. Grab onto your probes. It is MUFON report time. So I included this MUFON report also in the description as well as individual links to all the information this person provided. I'm talking about you got three movies, two pictures, and, you know, again, another individual that really took the time to document their sighting. And documentation is so important and extremely valuable when it comes to these types of sightings. For this one, we go to Omaha, Nebraska. Now, this is the first for me because I haven't seen any any kind of UFO sightings or reports out of Omaha. So the report number is 82836. And this is a good one because uh, the person was just sitting in their car, just sitting there minding their own business. Looking out of the window, and actually uh, I believe they were warming up the car. It's freaking cold in Omaha. And so they were warming up their car when they looked out the window and noticed a bright star slash planet. Or at least, that's what they thought it was. I don't know about you, but if I think I see a star and then something funny happens, okay, that's a, that's reason to start pulling out all kind of cameras. But to their amazement, and I'm quoting, to their amazement... The object started to move erratically. Now, I'm going to stop it right there. What is it with UFOs and moving erratically? I don't get that. If anybody listened to my show back, well, now seven years ago, 
when I first started it, there were so many reports about UFOs moving crazy, just erratic. Some of them seemed to be like dancing with each other. You know, I don't get it. That makes no sense. Now, if you have a UFO, you came into the atmosphere, your crappy ship uh, decided to clunk out on you and it starts acting all crazy, I get it. But there are so many reports. It's like, if you're intergalactic or interdimensional, you can't get your crap right. I mean, get your ship right. Jeez Louise. Anyway, so he says the object started to move erratically, uh, realizing it couldn't be a star or a planet. Uh, they decided to move a half block closer. So he got a picture. Actually got two, and it's in the description. And again, it's a cell phone, so it's not the best picture. However, you do see the object. Now in the video, one of the three actually has a, an airplane that flies by. And what he described, or she, was that the object dimmed. This object dimmed. The plane flew by, and you see it in the video, and it kind of dimmed. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, at the time that it happens, uh, the camera kind of goes out of focus, but in no means do I think that this was done on purpose, but he says the object dimmed as the airplane flew by, and then once it uh, cleared, it came back again. So the object itself, when you see it in the video and the pictures, is uh, kind of circular, but it has like a glow to it. And the glow isn't really consistent, you know, I don't know if it's like a twinkle or something. So yeah, you could probably confuse this for a star or a planet. And the truth is that a lot of us, when we're out there, we do confuse, you know, things in space, especially twinkling stars as UFOs. But, as he mentioned, the object was moving erratically, and that's a definitely a sign that something's up. Now, could this have been a drone? It was pretty high up. Um, you'd have to have a pretty fancy drone to go that far up. And uh, also, could it have been a balloon? I don't. Not, not too many balloons glow. But could have been a Japanese, uh, not Japanese, what the hell am I talking about? Could have been a Chinese lantern. Well, maybe. But, anywhere I've been, did they let go of these Chinese lanterns? They usually just don't let go of one. So if it was one, it was a rogue lantern. And it needed to be shut down. So, again... I bring up these MUFON reports because they are important. Because there are people like you, like me, who are out there documenting these sightings and these incidents. And we should all be ready. As a matter of fact, I myself got me a new fancier phone with a better camera. Because I'm ready to start documenting. You should too. No matter what it is. Document it, report it. It's not hard because if Security Team Temp can do it. So can you. So the other day, I actually had a, uh, a voicemail left by an individual. And I don't know if you can hear this, but I'm going to go ahead and play it anyway. Uh, a while back, Big O and I, we kind of uh, were kidding around about obtaining a UFO. Because, you know, hey, why not? It'd be fun. So this is the uh, message I received. Check it out. Excuse me. I'm looking for Manny Moonraker. I understand you're looking for either a flying disc, cigar class shit. Now, are you looking new or used? I have both. I also have the long cigar or stogie shave with and without air conditioning. In the sleep chambers, sleep 6 to 18, depending on the body size of your friends. I also have a medical disc and a starship, depending on your credit range. Call me, set this work, I'm your interstellar seller, 
7712119-62387. I'll be waiting. Ain't nobody has time for this many. Yeah, so that was uh, Septus Quark. And one of the uh, many talented characters that comes out of the uh, the Dave in the Morning show. Which I'm surprised. Uh, I would think Dave would see me live and he'd be on here at a drop of a hat. But anyway, check them out. Also on Spreaker, Dave in the Morning show. Uh, they're on 630 Central. Funny crew. And always, always willing to interact with the audience. So... Add them to your podcast list. So as I was saying earlier, the uh, Aurora Alien Encounter will be August 22nd. We will have a table and booth. Well, not a booth. I'm sorry. We'll have a table. We'll dress it up like a booth, I guess. Um, But we will have, with myself and the rest of the UBR crew, Ronnie Dawson will be hanging out with us. And, you know, really, I'm looking forward to him. I'm looking forward to hanging out with Ronnie Dawson live. You know, we've only uh, talked by phone, we've done interviews, but we get to be with the man live, and I think, and I know, I'm pretty damn sure that Ronnie Dawson is going to enjoy the Aurora Alien Encounter, and there are so many things that are going to be happening, and uh, I invite you, if you're in Texas, or if you just want to fly in to hang out, let me know. We'll meet with you. You can hang out on the podcast. I am planning to do something live, maybe like a Facebook live or maybe a YouTube live. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see when uh, when we get closer what kind of craziness we can put together. So again, this is where we're at. So this week, look for a podcast that will include the actors... From the Alienators. And if you haven't checked it out, listen, I know some of you are diehard ufology friends. Go, friends. See, this is what I hate live. I know some of you are diehard ufology fans. And you will take a bullet in the name of ufology. And so, the Alienators, I'm going to tell you right now, as Christopher Farley said, it is a mockumentary. So, there is some fun made of ufology. Because we have some very, very extreme, out there, really hard to swallow personalities in ufology. And the movie does take some of those and really bring them up close and personal, all up in your face. But there's a reason for that, you know, and, and there's, there's a reason why you guys look For different podcasts, different shows to listen to because you're tired of some of those big personalities. You're tired of listening to the people who rant and rant about all the old crap and seem not to be able to move forward. Some of those stories are great. Don't get me wrong. Rendlesham, wow. What a great freaking UFO story. Fantastic. Loving it. But there's so many other things going on. There's so many other UFO incidents going on right now worldwide. Roswell's another one. Yippee. You've got your crash. The people have died off. But you still have a good gift shop and an annual event. Wonderful. But what's happening now? Today, we have so many radical stories, so many crazy, outlandish personalities out there sharing information about secret military projects, people being taken and put into these projects to go off into the solar system and beyond. And then you have all the things that's coming out of NASA You know, are are they really looking for life or are they stalling? Are they stalling us, keeping us off track? Speaking of off track, they published this week a picture of the rover 
and the treading on its one of its wheels is starting to fall off. I could care less. The truth of the matter is that there has to be a reason why they continuously go to Mars. Now I understand if you look at the theory that the planet eventually is not going to be hospitable because we're screwing it up or because there's going to be cataclysm on the way, end of times type of thing, that we need to find somewhere else to go. So, you know, Mars is, relatively speaking, a hop, skip away. And you don't want to go the other way because it's a little too hot. Right? You don't want to go to Venus or Mercury because not going to cut it. But still, what is it with Mars? And why do we continue to have other reports of people saying that they see things on Mars? Another thing reported this week was that there was a scout on one of the hills, not too far from the rover, watching it. Again, what is that? What, is that all baloney? Is that just people trying to clickbait? And they, it might be, you know. Could there be something there on Mars? Why not? You know, you have scientists that are saying that what happened on Mars was cataclysmic. It was like a nuclear bomb. Like something significant happened to remove the atmosphere. Could there have been a civilization there that caused basically a gigantic screw-up? They blew themselves away? I don't know. But the truth is that whenever NASA finds something, we probably get maybe a tenth of it. And they'll tell us about it maybe six, seven months after it happens. But until we have the big bucks to go out there ourselves under a private enterprise, we're not going to know the truth. That's basically the bottom line. So until then, we really need to get together and find out. Find out what's out there. And we can only do that by networking and working together and not the way ufology is working right now in pieces. Everybody doing their own thing. I guarantee you that if we all get together and concentrate our efforts and our resources, we'll get something done, right? I'm pretty sure of it. So don't forget, if you want to support the podcast, like, share, subscribe, follow, tweet, retweet, do whatever you need to do. Just get us out there. Share it. Let people know the Manny Moonraker is here and the UBR family as well. Check out our t-shirts, calendar. It's all out there. So I want to thank you for listening today in my live rant. Because without you, I'd be talking to nobody. But the show is A million times better when you talk back. So email me, Manny at UFO Buster Radio. You can tweet, Instagram, Facebook. You know the drill. I already said it. I'm about interacting with my listeners because together we are the ones who are going to solve some of the greatest mysteries in the world today and probably tomorrow as well. So with that said, sayonara, ciao, hasta la vista, baby. And thank you for listening. Thank you. Always.